So I want to make a, a brief presentation of the universal apostolic preferences and maybe some uh, ideas about your work. Yeah, no. So how can we help the society to go on with the apostolic preferences? Well, the starting point is the Ministry of Reconciliation. We try to do that in our life, in our works, in our way of proceeding. We are companions in a worldwide mission of reconciliation and justice. That was the uh, synthesis that the general congregation made of our journey since the Second Vatican Council until now. And we have a, a lot of inspiration in this. I have a lot of things to do, but many things to live about, no? We are diverse, 16,000 Jesuits from many different cultures in more diverse parts of the world than ever. No, no, this is a, a, the reality of the society today, but not only Jesuits, no? hundreds of diverse partners in mission everywhere. No? If we, put all to, I, we have never done a, a census, a census, how do you say that? We have never made up, we don't know how many are, but there are many. Hundreds, hundreds. No, Jesuits, we are minority. Also, in the, from different cultures, from different cultures, as I think one of the more amazing realities of the society today is the multicultural face of the society. No? And it's really amazing. So, the society, and this is a point I, I, I used to underline, no? the society in Africa, so this reality is because the planting of European and North American missionaries. No? I think we have to recognize that, that from Europe and from North America, so many Jesuits and others came to Latin America, went to Asia, Africa, and they really plant. No? So who, those ourselves who received that, uh, see, we are, the multiculturality has to be because of the generosity of those who went everywhere. And this is the challenge, to be one body no, in unity, in diversity. No? The, the image of the body is uh, also from, from some poles, but as you know, Ignatius, use a lot this all the time he's talking about the body of the society the body of the society the head on the body so but really the head of the society is christ the only way the society can be a body is because we really are a founded in christ as we know so this is the paragraph of the congregation that uh, we are trying to, to do, no? General Congregation asked Father General to evaluate progress and our current apostolic preferences and if appropriate to identify new ones. But the second part of the paragraph is the real challenge, no? And the real novelty. Discernment of such preferences should include the greatest possible participation of the society and of those involved with us in mission. As you know, it's the first time in the history of the society that we try to do something like this, so that the whole society and the partners in mission they make a, a discernment in common to have a vision of the next 10 years. No? That this is really what we uh, try to do uh, during the last two years. And was a real amazing experience for so many communities, so many provinces, and so many uh, persons in the society. So we are called to be pilgrims. No? A start and accompany process. It was a, a, a very uh, important message that Pope Francis gave to us in the general congregation. The Society of Jesus has been founded not to preserve spaces, 
not to be no, in some words, but to start and accompany processes. And what we have lived in these two years is a real process. And what we want to live in the next 10 years is a process. So really to consider ourselves as pilgrims is very important that also connect us with what Ignatius thought from himself. No, he's, in the autobiography, he gave himself the name of El Peregrino, the pilgrim, no? he's, the, because it's a journey in, where we are uh, engaged. The Society of Jesus is a key turning point as I think the church and the world. And we have to be aware of this. And that's why uh, we have reflected a lot about the connection between mission and life and life and mission. So if we are not only thinking about something to do, as I will repeat uh, later, if we are not now asking for what to do, we have a lot of things to do. No, so how to do it? No, how to do it? And the uh, fundament of this, how to do it, is the interconnection between life and mission, mission and life. If we don't live what we do, and we don't, we don't do what we live, we are not uh, being coherent or consistent with our vocation. And also, it's a very important moment. No? So, deserving to be close to Christ and to share faith. No? That's why discernment is need to find the better ways. No? Discernment of this interconnection between life and mission and how we can put it in action. So we have to, we have a, a, a time later to uh, pray. We have to really ask these two questions. Now can, can we, can we take the, this so big challenge? Are we willing to do it? No? Can each one of us uh, making that decision uh, personally. So that's why this process is a kind of bridge between our spiritual roots. That's what the general congregation also did, uh, a big uh, effort to get back to our spiritual fundaments. And that should Leave, uh, make us possible to do this sentiment in common as an international body. So preferences, no? This word was used by Father Kolvenbach. No? As you know, Father Kolvenbach, for choosing words, was very precise. No? And because this, in the general congregation 34, we start to talk about priorities, and all people who make a strategic planning use the word priorities. And Father Kolbenbach, after a, a deep reflection, he used the word preferences. No? And we also, in the, when we began this process, we discussed about the word. Why preferences? And not priorities. No? And we just, uh, uh, confirm that preferences is really what we need and what we want to have, not priorities in the sense that priorities you exclude. When you prioritize something, you are excluding. Here is not a, a kind of choosing between schools, universities, or parishes, or, or, or first we have to build a parish and then, no. Preferences are vital orientations for focus all our apostolates in the next 10 years. Preferences, again, is more a way than something to do. A way to do more than something to do. They are not something to do, but an inspiration. An inspiration that should focus us in our uh, up every ministry that Jesuits uh, try to do. Because we cannot predetermine 
what we are going to do. No? And that's also a, a, an important insight that is uh, present even in the Constitution. You remember how many times Ignatius in the Constitution say, but this should be understood according to the times, the persons, and the... So we cannot say now what is going to happen in the next 10 years about some, what to do to put this in action. This process has taught us that our means, the preferences, are a means for continuing to be guided by the Spirit. So the preferences should be a kind of, a, kind of like this, to be connected, connected with the Spirit. No? And that's what we experienced during the last two years, making the, the process of uh, the discernment to arrive to the, to the preferences, and is, I think, the mood we need to be sure that we are guided by the Spirit. The preferences, they are the fruit of a spiritual process. No, it's not only a rational process. It's not only a strategic planning process. No, it's a, a spiritual process launched by the letters uh, that was, uh, I wrote to the society during the uh, year 2017. The first one was about what I mentioned before, life and mission, and mission and life. No, because it's the fundament. If we are not really convinced of that and doing that, it's very difficult to uh, go ahead. The second letter was about the discernment in common, because we know what is that, but we need to renew the way of doing that discernment in common, including other people you know, that are our, our partners in mission. And then in October 2017 was the letter uh, initiating the process and uh, giving the, the, the phases that we uh, accomplished during 16 months. But at the final, at the final, the preferences are not ours because the Society of Jesus doesn't not mission itself. No, the mission, we receive a mission. And we receive the mission, do you know, you know this man? <laughs> it's like this. Don't, you always see him smiling. And there was an a, a, a Argentinian Jesuit friend that after Pope Francis is a pope, he said, but where he has this smile until now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is him. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a pope who uses an Ignatian language. That's every, uh, you know, uh, also Cardinal Parolin, the Secretary of State, say, no, I'm now convinced, tell me once, I'm now convinced that uh, Pope Francis is a Jesuit. <laughs> and then why, why? No, because he really asks everybody, he consults. And after, he does what he wants. <laughs> Suggestion. But also, he has passion, passion. Okay, here are the four preferences no, that we receive from Pope Francis. The letter from Pope Francis is a very nice letter. Um, it's a short letter, but I think the points are very important. No? The third point is about the process. No? He said, I, because he was really informed all the time, he accompanied the process. No? And I know he's, he, he, he said, I know there has been a process, a process of discernment. No? The second point is these preferences are aligned with the needs of the church today. No? So that connection with the church for us is very important. We are not an autonomous, independent institution. No? We are part of a big body that is the church, and we want to serve the church. That's the, the, what the Society of Jesus is funded for. And the third one, the third paragraph said, but 
if you are not men and women of prayer, all the rest is nothing. So again, it's not only to do, but it's how we do things, how we do things. We do things in connection with the Spirit, with the Lord. If not, it makes no sense for us, even if we do good things. We have good school, we have good university, we have good parishes. If we just, the connection is not guaranteed, the rest is really nothing. So, the first preferences show the way to God through the spiritual exercises and discernment. Because I have received some feedbacks, I'm very uh, suspicious because they, I don't know why Jesuits don't, uh, don't read all the phrase. So I received the, the preferences are Ignatian spirituality. No, no, <laughs> that's not the preference. The preference is not Ignatian spirituality because we are not a branch that is send, selling some product. We are not selling something. No, our mission is to show the way to God. That's the preference. Show the way to God. No, that's what, the, what we want to do. And we do this with preferential instruments, spiritual exercises and discernment. No, so we are not promoting a kind of a spirituality. We are trying to put our best instruments for showing the way to God. No, to showing the way to God. That's what the, so the Society of Jesus wants to do as the church wants to do. These preferences, uh, if, when you read the preferences, you will find that all the preferences are a message for us in first place. So it's a, it's a message to ourselves as a body, as an apostolic body. Because if we don't incarnate what we propose to the others, or propose to do, we are losing time. No, we have, so we have to be coherent in that, in that sense. These preferences you know, take the context of secularization as a sign of the times. You know? this, the secular or the process of secularization in the world today that is very different, but is a common experience in all the societies today. Is a, for us, it's an opportunity. We, have, we live secularization, not as something we are losing, but something we are having new, uh, new spaces for uh, a spiritual freedom, for uh, really personal decisions. So the context of secularization is what we take as the moment of the message of the spirit to use our instruments, spiritual exercises and Discernment, no? so live the spiritual exercises more deeply is the first challenge to us. If we don't live the spiritual exercises, we cannot use it to show the way to God. That's, that's a very important point. A deeper personal and community relationship to Christ and a way of living the exercises that really transform us. I don't know if you remember a paragraph in the document of the general congregation that made the question, why the exercises do not transform us as deeply as they should? And that's, that's why these preferences, in the first, in the first uh, person, a challenge to, this, to the Jesuits and pandas. We have to live in the first place that. And then we can offer the spiritual exercises. We can offer with more creativity. I think it's a, a push, no? it's an invitation to create the ways, new ways of propose, proposing the spiritual exercises, especially to the young people, with the new means, with new media, with new ways, with new times. No, we have to you know, think how to uh, 
multiplicate the opportunities so people can really make the experience of the exercises. Spiritual conversation has been uh, rediscovered in this, in this process and can be used in so many circumstances. No, even without the name of spiritual conversation, for example, thinking in uh, university boards, no, how to discuss. No, when, uh, that, what, what we learn with the spiritual conversation, that's very important to listen to the others, to listen to the person. But also it's very important that you, what you said is uh, you are honestly and transparent when you say something. You don't do, you don't do, you don't, you don't, don't say an argument just to convince or to manipulate a decision. No? To be transparent and to put the things. So how to apply this kind of uh, way of uh, making, making decisions also in our and in different levels. And share spiritual exercises and discernment with others is the point. The second preferences it's a long phrase, but also it's very important to read it. No? To read it, not to only say the poor. <laughs> because there is to walk, to walk with the poor. With the poor, the outcasts of the world, the, those whose dignity has been violated, in a mission. It's not only to be there, no? it's for something in a mission, in a mission of reconciliation and justice, that's the, what we said before. So, with these preferences, preference, we desire, first of all, again, a mission to us, make ourselves more and more companions of Jesus from closeness to the poor. And that's, a, a, I think, is a very important challenge to all the communities and to all the apostolic works of the society. Now, how we can get closer to the poor. In every sense, closer physically, emotionally, uh, our, our, how we see the world. The closeness is, a, is how to be really close to somebody, you know what that means. No? How we can be really close to the poor, and this is a movement that I think the society has to, to, to really discern uh, deeply. Maybe, maybe, this is a proposition we are trying to, to decide in, in the next weeks, this will be the mode for the Ignatian years, 21 and 22, no closeness to the poor, our, our poverty. What means that today and the next and in the next decade? What means that the society wants to live the vow of poverty and what means to be close to the poor? So so a different context in a so different what we say before, diversity continues to be a reality, but also the poor are a diverse reality. It's everywhere we have that uh, form of life. Work with them. Because we are with them, we can work with them. We are not uh, trying to work for them only. It's with them. No, it's the, that's what the, the incarnation of Jesus teach us. That we have to be then work with. No? For social justice and for a change of economic political and social causes is a, 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 a deeper transformation, not only to assist or to... That means that we have to think also, think more. No, it's all, also a challenge for the intellectual uh, apostolate. No? Understand better the processes that generate injustice and help to develop alternative models no, that's, it's not the, more, the, the easier task in this moment of the world so to propose alternative. And uh, 
propose a globalization process that is based on multiculturality. You know? our, our experience of being a multicultural body also gives us the opportunity to promote our, our well, uh, really, multiculturality is recognized. Also, in these preferences, there are some uh, precise points. No? We take care of migrants, displaced, and those who are trafficked. We, are, we have a commitment here, no? and uh, we want to continue and to deeper, to deep in our uh, work with migrants and displaced people. Defend the culture of, and rights of indigenous peoples. That's also came out very hard in the in the uh, uh, common discernment you know, that the sensitivity sensitivity about indigenous everywhere you no know, really put it aside you no know. also a strengthened democracy you no know, that's a you know, uh, uh, Jan mentioned Venezuela before and we can make a uh, if we see all the world around now, also this country, democracy is in a real weakness process. You know, and we need to our works to form citizens and promote vocations to public service. Now, political politicians that really see the common good and not their own particular benefit. And help to eliminate all kinds of abuses inside and outside the church. The abuses or the, the, the focus on abuses is included in this preference because we are convinced that are part of the changing of the world. Now, the abuses are not cases only. Now, we have to, to face the cases and we have to repair and we have to make justice and we have to prevent, but the causes of the of the abuses are in the way of the power is used in this uh, system we live. So this is the second preference. The third one, again, to accompany to hope-filled futures. So to accompany watching the future. Accompany young people in the creation of a hope feel future to accompany, no? to go with. What we want to do here, young people and their situation are a crucial place from which the church seeks to perceive and discern the movement of the Holy Spirit through this moment of human history. This is very important and this is one of the, I think, most more important insights of the last synod. No, if you want to understand better how the spirit is working in the world today, get in the shoes of the young people. No, get there. From there, you are going to understand better what is going on and how the spirit is moving. So the poor and the young are complementary and interwoven locus theologicus that uh, that's the idea. No? From there, we can see better how the spirit is working in the world. That will allow ourselves to be helped by young people. Now, the first thing to, uh, to approach the young people is us to be helped has to be helped to see the world in a different uh, way and to understand better the epochal shift that is taking place today, no? Because they are native from that epochal change. We are in the other side. We are trying to learn what is going on and we try to interpret. So we, have, we are committed to create spaces in the church and in society so that discernment is promoted and young people can grow and promote the well-being of the society. That, for our apostolic works, we have a lot of schools, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, parishes and universities and social centers. 
at the young there in direction positions? Are they really part of the discernment, the thinking, the decision making processes? Or they are only beneficiaries of our action? So we have to change that to create a space where young people really is giving themselves responsibilities of the others. And we need to be coherent in our life. No? You know very well that young people, they understand very well what we do, not what we say. No? They, they will do what we do. If we do something but more or less similar to what we say, okay. But we have to be coherent in our life. And the fourth one, collaboration, uh, to collaborate in the care of the common house. That means that work with others, again, to think, to develop models of life, of life based in respect to creation, to overcome causes. Because again, the environment, this, we cannot stop this because the system is the same one. If we don't change the system, it will continue. We can be slow, slowly, or can be in other ways, but it's uh, going to go, to go deeper. Investigate and analyze, make a discerning reflection leading to decisions that can heal the planet. That's if we can uh, contribute, really, to go in that direction, to make deeper reflection about what means the uh, environment the care of the environment, and take a special care of areas such as Amazonia, Congo Basin, India, Indonesia, and also the oceans. No? Now there's a lot of, of uh, publicity about this. And that is the big, the big uh, thing, you know, to modify habits of life based on an economic model of consumerism and unsustainable production of goods. No? And, and now, Around plastic is all uh, plastic, water, but really there are very different points we can approach. And the last line is a very short one, but maybe is the challenge. No? How we can start to change our life in small things. No? Uh, Jose Maria has taken the plastic cup. <laughs> <laughs> If we, if we make disappear the plastic in this room, what happens? <laughs> no? So how we can't really, we are con uh, dependent of this kind of uh, way of living. Until this, the preferences. But we need some conditions, we, how we do this. And this is the first one. One of my surprises after uh, the promulgation of the preference was a, a immediate feedback from, from some intellectual Jesuits. Where is the intellectual apostolate there? <laughs> no? Because that's, a, that's the kind of reading Jesuits are very used to. Where I am here. No? So, they go through 10 pages and then they find this where I am here. <laughs> where if you don't find intellectual apostolate in that letter, please read it again. <laughs> <laughs> because I think in every page, every page of that letter has to be, that's also to say about intellectual apostolate. That is intellectual depth, what we need. This is our tradition because it's part of our charisma. We are not choosing to be intellectual apostles. No, that's part of our way of being, our way of proceeding. So we are part of that. No, the Society of Jesus, since its foundation, is in this, uh, in this uh, way. And we are convinced that intellectual apostolate, the way we approach intellectually, everything is a unique contribution we can make to the church's service to the people. 
So we, it's, we cannot renounce to that. A dimension of all areas of our work. No? It's not just an apostolic sector. We, it's a way of doing what we do. The second one, collaboration. And I think in this group, it's very evident that a, we are all collaborators in the unique Christ mission entrusted to the people of God, his followers, no? Not, not, the, no, not the collaborators with the society. No, the society is a collaborator of Christ's mission. And that society means Jesuits and partners. See, the whole body of the society is collaborator. This is an emergence of a sense of the lay vocation is enabling a spirituality for collaboration. Also, as we promote Jesuit vocation, we need to promote lay vocations for this kind of uh, way of understanding the mission of the society. And that uh, gives us apostolic energy and a lot of creativity. You know? so it really changes the way of going on. Networking, <clears throat> globalization is giving us this big opportunity to really work together, really work, and we are moving in that direction, and we can go faster and deeper to be a universal body for mission. Uh, and networking can help us really to be a body, a universal body, no? we, not only to proclaim, or we are universal because we are in different places, no? to be really a, an universal uh, network. So we can do really something as a body. And of course, all this is a loud call to conversion. We need, we need to change. We need to change. Call to ongoing and continual conversion, personal conversion. No, we struggle with our, ourselves every day. No, we need to transform ourselves, but also community conversion. No, this has been an experience also how community can be uh, more inspirative, more creative, more and institutional conversion that maybe is the most complex conversion we are called to. Because we have a lot of institutions with a long tradition, and as you know very well, to change an institution is not so easy, no? because always has been like this. And, on, and it has a, the importance of the, the continuity, but also to change uh, the, inter the internal way of culture of an institution is not so easy. If we want really that to have the institution as an instrument, we have also to make a big effort in uh, institutional conversion. That means restructuring of mind and hearts, and that these preferences wants to be an inspiration to conversion, to do something different. So again, the questions, are you ready for that? Are you willing to do that? No? Are we ready for that? That's the point. So this group, this group, is called to help the conversion process to become the minima compañía colaboradora. Uh, as you know, minima compañía is an, uh, uh, words, the words that Ignacio uses a lot. And humbly, I, I add the last word. Minima compañía colaboradora. That's what we want to, to, to be in 10 years. No? And this group is called to help the society to become like that. How this group can help the conversion? Some ideas, you, you are going to work all the week, so I, I suppose uh, on Friday I will have a better picture of that. <laughs> Discernment is the fundamental call, so you can help descending no, you, have, you are invited to discern, and these days 
are days of discernment. Apostolic planning. No, discernment is very good, but if it's not connected to apostolic planning, but no, nothing happens. Or can happen that nothing happens. So apostolic planning gives body to the spirit inspiration, no? and is the way collaboration. So how to really involve well, one of one of the of the concerns uh, that I keep in my mind after the process of this 16 months is that collaboration is okay. We can is very nice in the documents. But it's very different how it's lived in the body of the society. No, there are provinces or apostolic works very used to, but they are provinces and apostolic works that have never think really on that. No, so you, it's not something that we have. It's really a challenge to become a collaborate corp, uh, body. So it's, a, it's the path we must go, but we have to go, and we have to find the, the way. It's part of the big conversion we need to have. And networking is essential because the preferences are universal, and we need to network at the international level if we, work, if we are to work on them. So also networking is a very important instrument to make this happen as a universal apostolic body. So the call is to set up and can follow me, you know, it was the, the invitation of Jesus to the fishers, fishermen, and they sent out everything. They changed their, their instruments to do another thing. So that's why we are, we have to make this uh, process of without haversack or spartanic. You know, how we take off what we have and we really put ourselves in the hands of the Lord. This is a very important paragraph also of the general congregation about the next step, what we are now starting. General Congregation 36 asks major superiors to ensure that apostolic discernment and planning in their provinces or regions is consistent with universal apostolic preferences of the society and the apostolic discernment and planning of their conferences. So, and this is the, the task we have to, to do now. now. So, and that's what we are asking you to help to make consistency between the apostolic planning of the provinces and regions, and I can say also apostolic works, and the apostolic preferences. So to make reality this paragraph of the General Congregation, Decree 2, number 22, a very easy to one to, to remember, 222. Two, two. <laughs> we do not have an apostolic plan for the whole society. And this is, I want to repeat this again. So we are not trying to have one apostolic plan because it's impossible, it's not useful because the, the, the diversity is so big that that is a, an, use, an useful process. The role of the curia is to define orientations, no? to monitor, to support and not to plan for the whole society. This group can be a great help for implementing the universal apostolic preferences at the local levels and networking among provinces and conferences. That's the idea of having this uh, group like this, like it is, no? So far, the process we have had has started from the ground and the implementation should start from there as soon as possible. No, that's, the idea is not, okay, we, the promulgation comes from the Pope, but the making, real, real, making it happen begins in the floor. So, 
obvious is need an assimilation process. No? First, individually, communities, apostolic works, and institutions, and that takes time. No? It takes time to really, there are a lot of, behind those 10 pages, there are a lot of thinking, a lot of prayer, a lot. So to connect with that takes time. The process is not to fit each one or each apostolic work is doing in this moment with the preferences, no? because I have also read some papers. No? Oh, no, excellent preferences. We do that. We are doing that. See, we do spiritual exercises. <laughs> no? We are working for the poor, or with the poor, yes. And we don't use plastic, and we are, we are very young. <laughs> That's the, the yes, we are very good for that. <laughs> what are you saying? It's nothing new. We are doing that. So that's not the process we want to, to promote. The process is conversion. Because even if you are doing something that is similar to that, you can go deeper and you can do more. No? We need to ask ourselves, where will be in 10 years regarding this one? That's, I think, we know every planning process try to make a dream, no? Where we want to be, no? We want to be in 10 years about this matter or these preferences. And the exam is a very important key of our spirituality. Uh, it is crucial to have plans at local and regional level with good procedures of reporting. No, we, it is a, an habit that we don't have in this society. No, to really have a, a way of going back and forward and to really make an exam and we can change and we can be all the time uh, renewing our... So, glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and ever. So thank you very much. This pilgrimage continues. Thank you.